Hi Bobcats, this is Ms. Lee, and we're going to continue discussing box plots by analyzing and interpreting them. Make sure that you have your notes, pause the video when necessary so that you can stay caught up. Okay, now that we know how to make a box plot, why do we even use them? Is it to see the individual data? No, the box plot doesn't show individual data, does it? Instead, it shows us the spread of the data. So when we use the box plots, we're just concerned with how the data is spread out. Remember, a measure of spread is a single number that describes how spread out or clustered together the data is. One measure of spread that we have already learned about is the range. And the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest numbers in a data set. Okay, so we're going to identify the range for each set of data and compare. This is what we call a double box plot, where there are two sets of data that we're wanting to compare their spreads. Okay, these are dancers' ages. There's two different groups, group A and group B. We want to find the range for each. So range is just simply high minus low. So the highest number for group A is 26, because this is the maximum value, and the minimum value is 17. So to find the range, we subtract the two, and the range is nine years. For group A, there's a range of a nine year age difference. Now we're gonna do the same thing for group B. The high, which is the maximum value, come on down to the number line, it's at 29, and the minimum value is at 18. And we wanna subtract the two to find the range, and we get 11. So the range in ages, for group B would be 11 years. Okay, so let's compare the two. The range for group B is larger than the range for group A. That means the data is a little bit more spread out. Another measure of spread is the interquartile range, also known as the IQR. And this is the difference between quartile three and quartile one. So basically, it's the range of the box area. So here we have our dancers' ages again. Let's find the IQR for each. Again, it's the box area, so we find the highest value of the box area, which is at 24 for group A, and we're gonna subtract the lowest box value, which is at 20. So the IQR, or the spread of the box, is four years for group A. What does this mean? This means that the middle 50% of the ages only has a variability of four years. Let's look at group B. The highest value of our box of the IQR is 26. Subtract the lowest, which is the left side. And let's see here. That looks to be about 21 and a half. So if we subtract the two, we get four and a half. So the IQR, or the spread of the middle part of the data, the middle 50%, is 4.5 years. So there's a little bit more variability in group B with the ages than in group A for the center of our data. Remember that box plots separates the data into four equal parts. Even though the parts may differ in length, or their spread, each contains 25% of the data. Okay. So look at this box plot. From the minimum value to our quartile one, and let me write that in, from the minimum to Q1, this represents 25% of our data. From Q1 to Q2, which is the median, represents 25% of the data. From Q2 to Q3 is another 25% of the data. And from Q3 to the maximum represents 25% as well. Okay, so even though from Q3 to the maximum, it looks like it may be the longest portion, you would think that there would be more data pieces. There's not. Remember, this isn't talking about individual data pieces. This is talking about the spread. So this upper 25% is spread out over more numbers. There's more variability. 
So if the length of a whisker or the box is short, what does this tell you about the values of the data in that part? It means the data is more concentrated in that area. It has less variability. Look right here, from Q1 to Q2. It's a very small box, isn't it? It's not spread out. It's not very long. It's shorter. So that means there's not a lot of variability. But if the length of the whisker or the box is long, it what does it tell us? It tells us that the data is less concentrated. It has more variability. So let me see if I can put this another way just to make sure everybody understands. Each represents 25%. Okay, so it's the same amount of, of data. So let's say I have five pieces of data. I'm just going to put X's to represent data. Okay, so my data can be really close together over here. There's three, four, five. Or my data can be spread out. One, two, three, four, five. They each still have only five pieces of data. It's just the concentration. Are they really close together? The values really close together? Or are they really spread apart? That's what this is telling us. Okay, so we can use this information and we can analyze the data in box plots. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, there's some things that I suggest you do that I do that I find helpful before I start looking at the questions. And that's just to get a feel of what the box plot is telling us and then to label the parts. Okay, this is telling us the ages of the United States Vice Presidents. And the ages range from not quite 35, about 36 all the way to, I would say, probably 71, maybe 72, we'll go with 71. Okay, I know that this is my minimum value, this is my maximum, this left side of our box is Q1, the right side of our box is Q3, and this is the median or Q2, the line that's inside the box. I also know that each part is, each quartile is 25%. So this is 25%, this is 25%, from the median to Q3 is 25%, and from Q3 to the maximum, maximum is also 25%. Okay, question one, what is the median age? Well, that's easy because I already have the median labeled, so I'm just going to go straight down to my number line, and it's probably about 53. True or false? More presidents were between ages 53 to 60 than 49 to 53. Well, 53 to 60, that age range, is right here. Here's your 53, here's your 60. So we're talking about from the median to quartile 3. They say that there's more presidents in this range than in 49 to 53. Well, 49 is right here where quartile 1 starts. So it's quartile 1 to 53, which is the median. Remember, the box plot doesn't tell us the number. It tells us the percent. And we know the percent is the same from, from both ranges, from 53 to 60 and 49 to 53. They're both 25%. So they represent the same amount of data. So this question would be false. What is the difference between the range and the IQR? Okay, we know the range is the spread of the whole data set. So we're going from 36 to 71. So subtract it. And you get 35. This is the range. The IQR is the spread of the center of the data, the box part. And the box part goes from 49 to about 60. Actually, I think that's 61, which is 12. Oh, nope, 60 was right. 
which is 11. So you subtract the 2 and the difference is 24. So the range was 35. And I thought this was a 61, but I was wrong. I guess I should have gone all the way down. It's a 60. And the IQR would be the 60 minus the 49, which is 11. And the difference between the range and the IQR, difference means to subtract, is going to be 24. What percent of the vice presidents were at least 60 years old? At least 60. Here's my 60. At least means this is the minimum value. So we want this value and larger. So we're talking about from the Q3 to the maximum, and we already have it labeled. It's 25%. Can you determine if any vice presidents took office at the age of 55? No, it doesn't give us individual data amounts. Box plot just talks about the spread. Okay, so no, we cannot determine that. What percent were between 49 and 60 years of age when they took office? So 49 is where Q1 starts, and 60 is where Q3, is that Q3? So we're talking about this percentage right here. This part is 25%, this part is 25%, so it is 50%. The box part of your box plot represents 50% of your data. It's the middle 50%. And then true or false. Half of the vice presidents, half means 50%, were between the ages of 36 and 49 and 60 to 70. Well, what percent was between 36 and 49? 36 to 49 represents the minimum to Q1, which is 25%. And 60 to 70 represents the Q3 to the maximum, which is also 25%. Put them together, it equals 50%. So is this true? Half of the vice presidents? It sure is. Oh, sorry, this one's false. <laughs> I see what I did wrong. Do you see what I did wrong? Take a look and see if you can figure out what, what I did wrong or what makes the statement false. Okay, this is what makes the statement false because it says 60 to 70. This is 70 right here, but our max goes where? To 71. So this is what made the statement false. So you're gonna have to be very careful. They're gonna try to trick you, and I got tricked, but you have to be very careful. Okay, so this statement would be false. In order for it to be 50%, it would have to go to 71. Let's try another one. All right, so a double box plot can be used to compare two sets of data. We already talked about this. The box plots are graphed on the same number line. Okay, so let's compare the median number of students in a homeroom for each grade. Okay, so taking a look, this box plot is about the number of students in homerooms. So we're talking about the number of students in each of the seventh grade homerooms and the number of students in each of the sixth grade homerooms. Okay, I know this is my minimum, this is my maximum, this is my median, this is quartile 1, quartile 2, and each represents 25%. For my 6th grade, this is my minimum or lower extreme, my maximum or upper extreme, this is my median, and I'm abbreviating median with MED, this is my quartile 1, Here's my quartile three. So the first question is asking us to compare the median number of students. We've already got it labeled, so what are the median number of students? In seventh grade, the median number is 24. In sixth grade, the median number is 19, so you're just comparing them. You could say something like, seventh grade has a larger median at 24 students, while sixth grade's median is 19 students. You could say seventh grade's median is six student or five students larger than that in sixth grade. Anything to that effect would work. Compare the middle 50% of homerooms for each grade. So I'm going to change and work this with green. The middle 50%. Remember, the middle 50% is represented by what? It's represented by the box. The box represents the middle 50%. We want to compare them for each grade. So here's the middle 50% for 6th grade. It's 
the box part. Well, what do you know? Look at the two boxes. What do you see? Well, I can see that seventh grade's box is shorter than the sixth grade box. So what does that mean if the box is shorter? If the size of the box is shorter? Or if the size of the box is longer? That's talking about variability, isn't it? Okay, the shorter the box, the more concentrated the numbers are. They're, they're clustered together. The longer the box means the more spread out, the more variability there is. So sixth grade, there's more variability in the number of students in their homerooms, whereas seventh grade, their numbers are pretty close together. This is like saying how many students are in Mr. Pham's homeroom, how many students are in Ms. Lee's homeroom, how many students are in Ms. Dershke's homeroom. Okay, and so on. That's what we're talking about, the number of students in each of the teacher's homerooms. So you could say something like the middle 50% of seventh grade is from 22 to 26 students. It says the IQR is 43, it should be three. While the sixth grade goes from 18 to 24 students, which has an IQR of six, so sixth grade is more spread out, it has more variability. Or you could say there's less variability for the seventh grade. And then what is the difference in ranges between the two grades? Okay, remember, we've been talking about two types of ranges. One is the range, high minus low, and the other is the interquartile range. If it doesn't spe specify that it is the interquartile range or the IQR, then we're talking about the normal range, high minus low. So we're just going to take the maximum for 7th grade is 29, the minimum for 7th grade is 15, and we're going to subtract. 29 minus 15 is 14. Then we're going to take the maximum for 6th grade, which is 26, subtract the minimum, which is 12, and we get 14. So is there a difference in their ranges? No. They both have the same range, 14 students. Okay, now it's your turn to try. So here's your independent practice. You're going to use the box plot to answer the questions. Question number one, what is the median of the time spent on the phone? Question number two, what is the difference between the range of the data and the interquartile range, or the IQR? Question number three, what percent of the people spent less than 22 minutes on the phone? Question number four, true or false? Less people spent 22 to 28 minutes than did 28 to 38 minutes. And question five, what percent of the people spent less than 38 minutes on the phone?